Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with my review for Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Job. Hope you can see that, Nightmare on Elm Street 5. Can you see the shitty makeup <laughs> on Freddy? This film, this is the worst Freddy makeup of the of the franchise. Part 6 is pretty bad. It just looks way too pink in 6. Well, I would say 6 is the worst, but this is definitely second place. Freddy in 6 just looks like a pink like piece of candy. In 5, he looks like an uh, old man. Like a wrinkly, wrinkled up old man. Let's see. Um, Nightmare on Street 5, The Dream Child. Stars Robert English, Freddy Krueger, Lisa Wilcox as Alice. It's directed by Stephen Hopkins. Okay, Stephen Hawkins, he's a director that, he's all, he's okay as a director. Predator 2 is the only movie I've seen of his the career that I like, that I can remember. Um, Lost in Space sucks, uh, this film. I'll just go ahead and give my rating. This is a low two-star film out of a possible four. Uh, it's only a passable, a Nightmare on Elm Street film, only a passable one. Um, I don't know which is worse, this or Freddy's Dead. I don't remember enough about Freddy's Dead. I just remember I didn't like it, but I'll get to that one in the next review after I watch it. But yeah, uh, this is just a passable Nightmare on Elm Street film. It's the worst of the first five. It's really the last uh, Nightmare on Elm Street film because the next film, Freddy's Dead, is pretty much like the epilogue of the of the series. Really, just ends everything and skips like years after this film. So this pretty much is the last like you know straight sequel. Like Nightmare on Elm Street film. I mean, in in order. Like it, this is the last one that keeps continuity, really. But um, anyway, to jump straight into the film, we got Alice played once again by Lisa Wilcox. Uh, the film takes place in 1989, I believe, according to the uh, uh, the year they've graduated in the film. I think, I believe it's 1989. Um, she has more friends now for some unexplained reason. I don't know why. The film doesn't really give a fuck to explain that, but whatever. Uh, her and Dan have uh, obviously, are obviously really much more romantically involved now. And at the beginning of the film, you get like an artistic shot scene of them having sex with like a blue filter. Uh, it's it's okay. It's an artistic way, most or the most artistic way I've seen in an, an Elm Street film shot. This film has like a really surrealistic. Um, Kind of quirky, um, comic bookish, kind of artistic style to it. Um, for the dream sequences, and like the looks of them. But uh, for the first opening nightmare, it's actually kind of uh, this film still does. This is not all bad. It has some good stuff in it. The opening nightmare here is kind of creepy. You get Alice, who like goes to take a shower after sex, as we all do. <laughs> she goes to take a shower. Fucking like she gets trapped in the shower and it fills up with water and she's like banging on the shower door and like falls straight out through the uh, out of the water and like fucking lands in like the asylum where Freddy was born and she's in the asylum and uh, she looks around and she's all at once got Amanda Kruger's like nun outfit on and name tag and like all the inmates like close in on her and you actually get a cameo by Robert England here playing his, his own character's dad playing Freddy's dad basically because you know out of all the hundred maniacs one of them had to be his father so. I guess we're to assume it's this one that looks exactly like Robert England. <laughs> and then I'll zoom in on her, and then she wakes up in bed, and she's there with Dan. Dan's like, Alice, Alice, are you okay? And then he kind of like fades out of camera, and then she leans back. She's like, Dan. And then it's fucking uh, Robert England there, and he like grab uh, or, or uh, Freddie's dad, who's also played by Robert England, who like grabs her or whatever and uh, jerks away from her, and then he disappears, and now she's really awake. Uh, and then she tells Dan about the nightmare at graduation, and uh, she's he, he basically tells her, like, you know, if you don't dream him up, he can't hurt us, you know, if you don't you know, fuck around with his domain, I guess, or whatever, uh, if you don't dream him back up. Um, she tells him that's really the first time she's felt, like, not in control of her dreams since, you know, the fourth movie. But, and so Alice has new friends here. The new friends and the new characters are the weakest of uh, the first five films. They're pretty bad. You got this character named Mark, who's like a comic book guy. The actor who plays him, he tries hard, but his acting is still pretty wooden at times. Um, you got the character 
Uh, I'm, it's hard for me to even remember these characters' names because they're so forgettable. Yeah, Yvonne, who's like this, played by Kelly Jo Minter, who's like such a bitchy character. I could not stand and hope that she died in the film, and she didn't, so that disappointed me even more. She's just such a bitch. She's so horrible and annoying. I can't stand her. And then you got fucking uh, this other character named Greta, who's okay, but she's only in the film for a little amount, so it doesn't really matter. And you got Dan back from the last film, which you get a little sentiment of value with him. And like I said in the last film, uh, part four is the last film where I actually care about the characters or really care about them. In this film, you got Alice and Dan. They really don't count because they're carry on carryovers from the last film. And even Dan, I don't care about like hardly at all. And Alice is the only one I really give a shit about. But, uh, of course you got these characters, and the first one to die is Dan, of course, because he survived the last film, so he must die here. So, Dan, uh, well, uh, well, I'll get to his death scene in just a second. Mm. Alice is, like, walking through the park. She's heading to work after graduation, and, uh, oh, her father in the film actually is, uh, I actually like the character change with his, with his character. He's, uh, He's no longer an alcoholic, and he's going to AA meetings, and he's, like, trying to help his daughter and rebuild the relationship and everything. He's trying to, like, rebuild his relationship with Alice and everything. So I like that. I like that character change. You know, the, the dad's character change I do like, and I think that was a smart move by the writers. But, um, so you got, uh, you got Alice who's just walking to work, and she, like, fucking all at once sees the jump rope kids, standard jump rope kids, and standard jump rope kids in a Nightmare on Street film, like, in the fucking park, like, singing about Freddy, and she follows them, and she goes into the asylum, and, uh, she's there in the asylum, she sees Amanda Kruger running around there, and she also sees, like, this fucked up looking baby, gothic looking baby carriage, which looks, which looks kind of cool, the visuals of the film are really good, Stephen Hopkins, as a director, has a really great, like, eye for visuals, and, like, the look of the film, but other than that, eh, not much. But I'm wondering how much of this was him and how much of this was the studio and how much of this was like time constraints because part, part four is a really big hit. And it's kind of like they just said, come on, motherfucker, we got to get this some bitch out quick. <laughs> so I think it's one of those rush, job, rush jobs that just suffers really bad from being rushed. But, um, so she's like falling around looking for Amanda Kruger and then she witnesses like Amanda Kruger giving birth to Freddy. It's like... Somehow Freddy has like brought his ghost mom spirit back to life in the dream world and is like using her to rebirth him somehow. Uh I'm not for sure. It's kinda of weird that Freddy can like bring spirits back from the dead, but you find out she committed suicide in the film, so I guess that's where she's damned and can't ascend to the afterlife. Um, because her spirit isn't free, that I guess that gives him the power to raise her back from the dead to use her spirit. I guess. Uh, a little convoluted much. <laughs> but um so anyway, so she gives birth back to Freddy, and Freddy's like comes out as a baby. He looks like a little, like a little burnt up, a little burnt looking baby, kind of like a really weird looking Freddy baby, which he should look normal. But I guess this is the dream version of him. Alice takes off after him. He fucking like uh, uh sc scurries across the floor, finds and goes into the church where he fucking died at in the last movie. He's there, he crawls into his old clothes, and then starts growing back to his normal length, and Alice tries to stop him, but she can't, and he fucking, like, regrows back to his regular length, uh, a regular size, I mean, and so it's kind of a decent rebirthing for Freddy, nothing, nowhere near as good as part four, but it's okay, so he's back as, um, he's back as regular Freddy now, and he, you get a cheesy one-liner where he's like, it's a boy, <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's okay, I mean, it's okay, but it's nowhere near as cool as, like, the opening line that he said when he came back to life in the beginning of Part 4, and he's like, you shouldn't have buried me, I'm not dead. It's nowhere near as cool or epic as that, it's a boy, it's like, eh, a little cheesy, but it's okay, I mean, it's passable. <laughs> so he's back as Freddy, and then, uh, he just get the sheet, you get to see Freddy's shitty fucking makeup, where he looks like an old man, it's horrible, can't stand it. And then, uh, Freddy's mom, of course, shows up there because for some reason Freddy's, like, afraid of her. And, uh, for some reason she has power that she can use against him as well, I guess, because she's a, was a religious person when she was alive. Somehow she's, like, has religious spirit power or something, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't really explain it. I guess just because she's a good spirit in the dreams, she has some kind of power. I don't know. 
But uh, and you get do get a funny line here where she's telling Freddie that she's gonna stop him, but she's gonna take his life back that she just gave him, and um, and uh, Freddie's like, "We'll see, bitch. We'll just see." <laughs> I thought that was funny. And then he kind of like fades off, and then Alice wakes up, and uh, you find out that she like had the nightmare while she was awake. Like, the dream came to her while she was awake, which is kind of an interesting idea that they don't do anything with in the film, that the nightmares can come to her now while she's awake. Because in the film, of course, she's pregnant. It's the dream child, and Freddy's using the dreams of her unborn baby because her baby has the same ability to bring people into its dreams. So Freddy's using that to, like, kill Alice's friends. But uh, the dreams, like, come to Alice while she's awake. Like, she senses them. Which is pretty cool. You could have some fun with that. Like Alice could be like walking around everyday life. And all at once it would just go crazy. And everything would become like some kind of weird psychedelic looking <laughs> world. Or something like that. And just transform into the dream world. You could do something really cool with that. But they don't do really do anything with it. But anyway. And uh, she's calling Dan after that. Telling Dan what the fuck's going on. And Dan is like. He jumps in his truck. He's heading there. And of course he falls asleep right then and there in the truck i'm like if i was in this situation i would be hitting my own head against the steering wheel before i'd fall asleep i mean seriously there's no fucking way i would have fell asleep fell asleep that quick but he falls asleep like right in the fucking truck driving and he hears his mom like on the radio saying that i'm calling in about my ex-son daniel or uh, who was like uh who was seduced by that bimbo slut whore alice i thought that was funny um, then Freddy appears on the other side of the vehicle, and Freddy's like lines in this film are like constant one-liners over and over. They take the one-liners of the first four films and amp it up to the uh, eighth degree, I guess you would call it. And he fucking like every line he has is like one-liner, one-liner, one-liner. Um, but they're kind of too cheesy and too lame. Like um, he like appears next to Dan, and he's got some champagne that Dan was gonna give Alice, and he's like, "Bad year, Dan." He like fucking like busts it, and then he like pulls off his own arm and sticks it to the like the fucking uh, sticks it to <laughs> to the roof of the vehicle. And I'm like, okay, self mutilation. I guess, I guess it's kind of entertaining to see Freddy rip off his own fucking arm. And, and then he's like, better bu better buckle up, dear. And I'm like, okay. And then the, of course Dan crashes and goes flying out his own fucking windshield. And then he gets on this motorcycle, which will become the Freddy cycle. Or Hell Cycle, whichever you prefer, and he transforms into basically uh, Ghost Rider. <laughs> it looks a fucking lot like Ghost Rider. Kind of like if Ghost Rider was made like in the early 80s, or, or late 80s, early 90s. This would be probably kind of closer to uh, what he would look like. Or kind of like if the if the guy who uh, designed the Alien for the movie Aliens, or for the movie Alien, I mean, like Giger, designed Ghost Rider, he'd kind of look like this. <laughs> but, uh, so all at once the bike like starts fucking fusion with Dan's body and like the cords go underneath like his uh hand like that, like in it. Um and that was cool. And of course Freddy pops up and gives some corny fucking one liners because Dan's a jock and he's like uh supposed to be like uh you get a well his uh dad like says that this boy feels the need for speed talking about his son in the film, talking about Dan. And then in this scene Freddy like comes like a metallic Freddy head's like on the bike and he's like looking at him going Yeehaw! This boy feels the need for speed! <laughs> I'm like, okay. And then all at once, like, these things start going into his legs, and he's like, Freddy's like, fuel injection, power drive! Like, every line is a fucking one liner, over and over. And then he's like, hey, Danny, better not dream and drive! And I'm like, dream and drive? Seriously, seriously, Freddy, seriously. You just getting lazy, Freddy. You just getting lazy. Sorry, I had a hair in my mouth, but that hair in my mouth is more entertaining than this film. But seriously, Freddy, you're just getting lazy, man. If you'd spend more, if you'd fucking spend half the time you do uh, trying to be a stand up comedian uh, killing these people, you'd done been through the whole cast by now. But anyway, and so he crashes. Um, in real life, he's like got into a wreck with a truck. Uh, Alice senses it, like turns around, and you see Dan like going down this big hole. So that's kind of it's kind of neat that she senses the like the death of her uh, you know boyfriend. So she goes to like she runs outside and there's the crash Dan's crash and he was in his truck the whole time. She runs out there and Dan's like body comes alive for one second and says, 
Hi, Alice. Want to make babies? <laughs> and then she passes out. That was that was entertaining. That was an okay scene. Uh, she's at the hospital. Yvonne is like a nurse there, I guess. And she's like talking to Alice about what's go what happened and Dan dying and everything. And she says, everything's okay, sweetheart. You're just a little pregnant. And I'm like, who wrote that line? Just a little pregnant? What is it, like medium pregnant? Uh, high pregnant? Uh, a lot pregnant? What? I'm like, eh. It's a fucking stupid line. Um... And then Alice, like, has dreams of, like, her son, like, manifesting itself in the dream world. It's like a seven- or eight-year-old boy or something like that. And I'm like, uh, or six or seven or, no, a seven- or eight-year-old boy, maybe ten, maybe nine, something like that. Somewhere in that range. And I'm like, well, how the fuck is this? Is this what Age Freddy manifests him as? Or is this what he can choose to manifest as? Uh... Uh, scratching my head here, I don't fucking get this, it's never explained, that don't make no sense, but he like comes and he's like in her dreams and he's talking to her and telling her he's like checking on her because he's sorry about her boyfriend getting killed and shit, of course the next day she's talking to Yvonne about it and she's like, uh, if you uh, checked on that little boy, you know, at the hospital, and she's like, we don't have a children's ward, so, you know, he uh, obviously never could have been there. So, wink, wink, he's obviously going to be her son. <laughs> I mean, the audience knows it, but I guess the characters don't yet, or we're supposed to believe that they'd be too stupid to figure it out yet. But anyway. Next scene, uh, you got to, the death scenes in this film, you only get three, so that makes it even lamer. You only get three death scenes in this whole film, which Dream Warriors and Dream Master are loaded with death scenes, and in this one, you just get three, so I'm like... Again, what the fuck? This movie is dull. This is the dull Elm Street film. It's dull. It's only a passable Elm Street movie. Uh, it's not absolutely horrible. You can watch it and have some fun with the visuals and stuff. And just with Robert England in the film, even though this is his weakest performance because he seems a little tired here. Like he's just worn out of doing the character. Like he, he's just tired of doing not so much tired of doing the character but just worn out this film was made some like so soon after part four it kind of seems like you just give out but um you get to the first death scene where it's like greta her she falls asleep at her dinner table and she like her mom wants her to be like a supermodel and makes her diet all the time and it's like always uh, getting on to her about her weight and so she has a nightmare where freddie like this is a fucking chef hat which is pretty silly and Freddy's there in a fucking chef's outfit with a chef hat on, and he's like, bon appetit, bon appetit, bitch, and he starts, like, force-feeding her food, and she gets real fat, and her cheeks, like, bulge up like that, like, out like that, puff out, I mean, and, uh, he's like, you are what you eat, and I'm like, oh, once again, the one-liners are just weak, weaker in this film, so much weaker, and, uh, he's, like, force-feeding her her own guts, but you get a cool scene here where Alice is, like, sensing the dream once again, like, uh, Gre uh, Greta's like coming out of the f coming out of Alice's refrigerator, and uh, Alice is like trying to grab her by her hands and like pull her to safety. And Freddy like comes out the other end of the refrigerator, grabs uh, Greta's hair, Gre Greta by the hair, and like fucking slams the refrigerator door. If you look close, there's like a little Freddy magnet holding a piece of paper on the refrigerator door at Alice's house, and on the p piece of paper it says "Die, bitch," I believe, <laughs> which I thought that was actually pretty fucking funny. But uh, you also get a decent scene here where uh, uh, Alice is talking about the fact that she's uh, pregnant to her dad, and, he, and he's like, I hope it's a boy, because it'd be nice to hear a boy playing around in the house again. And that's kind of nice, because, of course, his son died in the last film, so that makes me feel for the character. His, her, her, Alice's dad is much more likable than like almost all the cast, <laughs> all the teenage victims in this film. I feel more for him than I do the teenage victims. Um, so that was a nice little touch, you know, a little warmth of the heart there um uh, the film has like some padding just like padding stuff because it's not really there's only three kills so they gotta pad it out and just give you some stuff to like kill time and then you get seen the standard scene where alice is like trying to explain to her friends like who freddy is and everything same shit different day uh, fifth movie in uh, we're sick of hearing the Freddy backstory and the character explaining to her friends who the fuck Freddy is or trying to explain to somebody who the fuck Freddy is. Um, you get another nightmare sequence where Mark falls asleep and Alice is like, draws on a piece of paper, draws like a little figure of herself, on uh, like a comic book page, draws a figure of herself on this little like comic book looking page that Mark's like drawn, like, or he's gonna draw, 
or make a comic book on there because he writes about this character called the Phantom Prowler or whatever. Um, and she like draws a little little like kind of like kind of stick looking figure I think of herself and writes Alice up above it and uses her dream uh, dream power or her dream master powers to like go into the dream world from there, uh, which is kind of cool. But in this film, her dream master powers seem, seem really downplayed. I guess it's because they made her so powerful in part four. They kind of wanted to retread back in this one and make it less like, like her like less of a really powerful adversary for Freddy, and more of just like someone who's combating who's combating Freddy, and doesn't really have that edge. They took away her edge really by doing that. And part four had like a really fun tone, and this film has like a really dark gothic tone, which would be fine. But it uh, it tries to do the comedy Freddy too even more over the top than four did with the over the, with the constant one liners. It's not as colorful as part four like look wise, but the one liners are even more more so than four. Uh, and the and the kills aren't hardly there. And this film just feels like a weird misstep after part four being so like you know fun, and then you go to this film that's like so down and dreary and you know dark. Which it would be fine if it was entertaining, but it's not. Cause part part one was really dark, and that film is better than part four. Even though I love part four, I'll admit part one's better. Uh, and this film is dark too, but still, the you just don't get enough kills. They're just ain't enough there, and it's just not entertaining enough. And the characters aren't entertaining enough. The film franchise by now, the life has just been sucked out of it, and the characters are just basically their stereotypes. You know, you got the comic book nerd, you got the fucking athlete girl and then you got the the girl who's like having weight problems or uh eating problems or whatever so they're all pretty much their stereotypes so you don't really get anything with them so and the plot is like kind of basic by now it's more about how you how you how do you bring freddy back and then how do you kill him at the end of the movie it's more about that and just like make a few entertaining death scenes and that's it and they kind of thought they could just do that and get away with just throwing the movie in the theaters and letting that be the end of it but no you can't it's just not entertaining enough. It's not good enough. Um, so Mark's asleep and Alice is in there, and this is like a really lame like dream sequence where Mark is like walking to the Elm Street house. It's the only scene the Elm Street house is in in the entire film. Um, Mark is in the Elm Street house, and there's he's just like fell in this random hole, and he's like holding onto the edges of it, trying to pull his stuff out. And Alice saves him, pulls him out. He sees the cuts on his hands. And like falls over and just fucking like wakes up back into the real world. And I'm like, okay, so Freddy's plan was like, uh, let this guy randomly wander into the Elm Street house and hope he falls down this hole. Okay, what? That was that's pretty fucking. That's just lazy right there, Freddy. That's just fucking lazy. Come on, you gotta come better than that, man. That's just fucking lazy. But anyway, and so after Mark like uh, wakes up, she sees uh Jacob there. Which is going to be her son's name, obviously. His spirit's there, and he's like telling her that uh, she doesn't really care about being a mom. She doesn't care about him, and, but he likes her and wants to stay with her, but she doesn't want him around. And she asks him who tell who told him that, and she he says, "My friend with the funny hand." And so obviously it's you know Freddy, and he takes off running upstairs, and she takes off running after him, and then she goes back and she opens the upstairs door, and she's like now back in reality, not in the dream world anymore, and that's when she's basically discovered what Freddy's plan is. Just from well, after that, she knows what Freddy's plan is. Um, Mark tells her, you know, what? Why don't you just give up the baby? You know, if you do that, well, he doesn't tell her just to do it. He just says, you know, that that's an option. You could just give up the baby, and you know, then it would be over. Freddy's defeated. You know, no baby, no baby's dreams. Freddy's dead. He can't do nothing. He's vanished back to hell or wherever the fuck he goes. But uh, you could do that. She's like, she says no because. She feels that he's a part of her, and she doesn't want to do that. So that right there, you could do an interesting idea with that, like uh, not so much like a pro or anti-abortion thing, but you could just do something like one of her friends. You know, obviously, I mean, it's just funny that her friends are just like okay with it, or at least Mark is, because he's really the only one that she tells or is, brings this idea up to that he's just okay with it. Like that, I mean, it's his his life at stake here. He just kind of like say okay with it they don't even go into it so you could have like one of her friends like be like trying to get her to terminate the pregnancy so they won't die because they fear for their own life i mean you could do something with that but they don't do anything with that so that's just cast aside so that plot line or plot point was completely useless and 
could have been so much more, but they just fuck it up the ass and just throw it away. Um, so then you got another decent scene here where Dan's parents are there and they're telling Alice that they want to like raise the baby as their own because they've uh, the doctor who Alice's doctor has like called him and told him that she, Alice has been having paranoid delusions and shit. And um, Alice, uh, well, as you get a cool scene here where Alice's dad is like, you think you can just walk in here and threaten my daughter? <laughs> And uh, because they threaten to take the, they threaten to go to the court and try to take the baby away, and and uh, Alice is like, he's not a thing, he's part of me, <laughs> and she's not giving him, uh, and she says, I'm not giving him to you or anyone else, and that's a decent scene. She, you know, her dad's like standing up for her, and she stands up for herself and doesn't want to give her baby up, and so that's a that's a cool scene. The original script for this movie had much more to do with the Amanda Kruger character and like uh, her like. She and Alice like talking to her about the fact she gave Freddie up for adoption and all that, and uh, that would have been a really a lot of that would have been really interesting, and that would have been some really cool stuff to have in the film. But no, they took that out because they wanted to dumb the film down and probably thought that horror audiences just couldn't I don't know couldn't handle anything deep or slightly meaningful. But whatever, <laughs> we're not that stupid, studio. Please, we're not. Our studios in general, we're not that stupid. But uh, anyway, um, there's not very many even. There's not even that many nightmare sequences in this film. You got one other nightmare sequence where, or one other nightmare sequence before the, uh, for the next death in the film, where fucking um, where uh, Alice. Oh yeah, Alice is on like uh, is in the hospital, and uh, they're checking on her baby, and she like gets sucked into like the baby monitor. Uh, she gets sucked into like the computer that's displaying the image of her baby or whatever, and she's in there, and Freddy's in there, and he's like comes up behind her, by her baby, and says, "See any family resemblance?" And that's pretty much the end of that scene. That's it. That's the end of that nightmare. And Alice wakes back up. That's pretty much the end of that. It's really quick. You don't even get you don't get much. And then the next death scene um, is Mark falling asleep, and uh, while well, Alice is like in the dream world trying to like find Amanda Krueger. Um. Mark falls asleep, he gets sucked into a comic book, and he's like in a comic book world, um, which looks pretty cool, but uh, you get a lot of stupid shit here in this scene. This is the most laughably stupid scene in the entire franchise. Well, no, not the most, but second, I would say, um, where Freddy's like riding on a fucking skateboard, and he's like coming towards Mark, and he's like slicing all these beams down and shit, and it's like so fucking stupid seeing Freddy on a skateboard. Uh, What's next? Like Jason Voorhees on a crotch rocket or something? I'm, like, I'm like, what the fuck? That's so fucking stupid. But uh, anyway, but you do get to see like uh Greta, who's like, who's like a doll or something like that, and Freddy's got her, and he like knocks her down, and she busts, which is a pretty entertaining scene. She's like a porcelain doll. Um, he's like tormenting Mark with her, and then Mark transforms into a fucking comic book character, which I don't have too much trouble with, despite the fact it's cheesy, because that would logically be his dream power, transform into a comic book character, but why does he start talking in, like, a 60s, like, fucking old-school comic book-style way, like, he looks at Freddy and is like, time to die, you scar-faced limp dick, he's, like, talking in some kind of silly-style comic book voice, and I'm like, what, uh... At this point, I'm like, what the fuck, movie? What the fuck? And then this, I can't forgive the movie for this. I can't. Freddy decides to counter this by transforming into Super Freddy, a parody of Superman. And I'm like, at that point, the the character has not just been drained of horror. He's been drained of intimidation factor. He's a joke now. The character has become a joke with the Super Freddy shit. He's become just way too cheesy. <laughs> that is just so fucking stupid. But I do like the next scene where he, where he, uh, all the color, like, drains out of Mark, because he's the only thing there in color, and all the color drains out of him, and Freddy's, like, slashing around everywhere like that, like, cutting Mark to pieces, because Mark turns into paper, which is a really cool scene, that's really cool, because his transformation into paper is, and him getting sliced up, with, like, the color draining out of him, uh, that's really cool, that was, that was cool, um, uh, Yvonne has a nightmare where she's like on top of this fucking swim board and it transforms into claws and she jumps in the water and Alice is in there and, uh, Freddy says, hey, Alice, wanna rock and roll? Uh, and he, she, she fucking like rolls on the side of the wall into the place where Yvonne is and Freddy comes up out of the water and Alice takes like this, uh, 
takes this fucking like swimming pool cleaner looking thing and stabs like the stabs the end of it into like Freddy's mouth straight through his mouth and like pins him up against the wall and she turn Yvonne like fucking escape and Alice says uh, and Freddy doesn't chase after him Alice says Freddy's afraid to come in come after him because Amanda like runs that part of the dream world or something or is like protecting him in that area or something and I'm like how much power could Amanda possibly have that Freddy wouldn't attempt to kill you I mean what could she possibly be doing uh, or what kind of power could she possibly have towards you know over Freddy or whatever I mean what the fuck you know what can she do but it doesn't really specify so I'm like okay just kind of a waste but um then you get to the end of the film basically um after Mark's dead Alice had enough of this shit and uh she decides to go into the dream world to challenge Freddy one on one finally to kick ass and take names uh, Yvonne goes to the asylum, uh, where everything started, where Freddie was born, so she can try to find Amanda Kruger's body, and they, they, the authorities say in the paper that she hung herself, but they couldn't prove it because there's no body, so why the fuck do they think she hung herself? <laughs> Whatever, um, she goes there to try to find Amanda Kruger's body, she finds it like one fucking second in this gigantic asylum, she just happens to find it in like the first second she's searching, and I'm like, what the fuck? That's that's almost that's almost made me like hate the movie right there. That's almost made me hate the movie. But it's still got some cool stuff here at the end. Uh Alice is having battle with Freddy. She fucking takes the baby carriage that she uh the demonic looking baby carriage, rams it into Freddy's back and the spikes like come out his chest and she knocks him down there where all the maniacs are and they all rip him apart because I guess Amanda Kruger is has the power in that area of the dream world and all the maniacs rip him apart and of course that has no effect on him and then you get like this really cool looking weird place kind of like the ending of the movie labyrinth where everything's like upside down and stuff and turn right uh <clears throat> to the side and everything and like you could walk on like you could be like you can walk like upside down and shit so it's kind of cool and the look of it is good once again stephen hawkins has a good eye for visuals um jacob decides to go with alice and she's uh and she's trying to get out of there with Jacob, and then you get another stupid scene where uh, Freddy like transforms into Dan, and for one brief second, Alice actually thinks it is Dan, and I'm like, who the fuck would fall for this? They pulled the same trick on fucking Nancy in part three, and they're trying to do it again here, and I'm like, I don't need this stupid shit again. I don't need a character going ignorant moment again, but thank God that she realizes it's not Dan, and uh, you do get a funny line here where Freddy's like, uh, saying kids always a disappointment. <laughs> Thought that was mildly funny. And then um uh fucking uh, Jacob tells uh, Alice where Freddy is because she can't find him. That he's actually he actually hides out inside of her body. And I'm like, okay, how is there a piece of Freddy inside Alice? Is it supposed to be like in the fourth movie where uh Kristen's power went through Freddy and then went into Alice? Did like part of Freddy go in her? Go in her? But it's not explored. the The whole idea is not explored at all. It just it just comes up right here at this last second. So I'm like, uh, okay, it's a neat idea. It's a fine idea, but it doesn't really it's not ex explained at all. So then I'll, you get a cool scene here though, where she's like forcing Freddy out of her body, and his face like comes out of her face, and they're like connected, and she like fucking grabs it, pulls it out, and it's like Freddy's like connected to her, and he's like. Come on, Alice. Now we can really get to know each other. <laughs> he fucking like starts like putting his leg like through her leg, and it comes out the other end, and puts one leg like through her gut, and it comes out like one end, and fucking like puts his 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 arm like comes out of her arm, and it like grabs it. It's like a bunch of really crazy shit, but it looks cool. The effect is cool. I like the effect, and it's really really cool looking. Uh, it's a great visual once again. And yeah, I like that part. Um, then Amanda Kruger, of course, Yvonne, Yvonne has found her body, so her spirit's free, just like that, and she goes into the dream world to try to, uh, um, she tells, uh, Jacob that, uh, he needs to use the power that Freddy gave him, and use it on Freddy, so Freddy has, like, gave the souls that he's took from the three victims in the film and gave them to Jacob, so why would Freddy have any power at all if the souls have been given to Jacob? But, uh, whatever, and so... 
uh, Jacob convinces Freddy to leave Alice alone, which he couldn't have killed her anyway because he would have killed Jacob, and then, then by doing that would have killed himself, so obviously Alice is in no danger. So all he could basically do is just torture her over and over. So he turns around. Jacob's convinced him to leave Alice alone, and he thinks uh, Freddy thinks Jacob's going to like um, help him now and be his buddy, I guess. Um, but instead he uses... Uh, well, through the movie, Freddy's like trying to get Jacob to trust him and everything because he has Alice's power to pull people into his dreams, and he wants to like live through Jacob's dreams. <laughs> but uh, Jacob tricks him into thinking he trusts him, and he then he fucking like shoots, like barfs, like he goes like he says a like, really cheesy line like "schools out, Kruger" or something like that, and fucking like spits out like the souls and one big like some kind of vomit looking ability. And it just like comes out of his mouth, like hits Freddy in the chest. And that's how Freddy's defeated. Such a lame death compared to his death in part four and even part three. And part one as well. Fuck, it's even lamer. It's almost even lamer than the one in part six. But, um, and then that causes like Freddy's like baby body to get pulled out of his back. And it's like, uh, that is uh, okay. That's entertaining. Like, his whole fucking, like, baby form comes out of his back. And then the souls are free, and Amanda Kruger comes over there and picks up the baby Freddy and absorbs her, absorbs him back into her ghost body, and then Alice absorbs her child spirit back into her, and that's pretty much the end of the movie. Freddy's not even defeated. It's like Amanda Kruger's just, like, got him in a hold, you know? And all at once, Freddy's, like, hand, like, glove hand bursts out of her chest, and he's like... Let me out! Let me out! <laughs> all these doors like slam in front of him, but they all keep breaking apart until the last one, and it closes, and then you got like this little fucking like latch that goes by uh, at the last second, while his arm is like stuck out of her chest, like struggling. To, he's struggling to break out of her, so you kind of get the idea that she's got him like holding him back, like holding him at bay. But eventually, of course, he breaks loose and. Then you get everything that happened in between this film and Freddy's dad, which we'll get to that with Freddy's dad. <laughs> but, um, so then that's it. That's the end of the movie. And then Alice, you know, it's not a little while later, Jacob's been born and Alice is there happy, you know, with a picnic with her father and Yvonne. I hated Yvonne. She's such a bitchy character because Alice all through the movie keeps trying to explain to Yvonne, like, who Freddy is and what's happened. And Yvonne doesn't believe her and keeps saying, stick to reality. And I'm like, Fuck you, buddy. Just die. Um, but uh, so everybody's happy at the end of the film, and then you get a bunch of kids jump roping in the background, of course, and then they're humming the Freddy Krueger like nursery rhyme, and then that's the end of the movie. So it basically, just you get that same like you know, oh, oh Freddy is gonna come back. He he'll probably come back. He might not be really gone, and it's like no fucking shit. Uh, you don't really need that little cliff, uh, little thrown in uh, thing there at the end like you got in the first four fucking movies. Don't need that shit again. But yeah, just to conclude this, even Alice in the film, who is really cool in part four, is like seems like she's really held back in this film and her powers aren't used to her full potential either. This is not a very good film. It's only a passable Elm Street film. Uh, it's okay. I'd recommend watching it if you've watched the first four. Fuck it, you might as well watch number five. But uh, it's not anything to write home about. And I can see why the film didn't do that well in theaters. I don't know why, though, they just want to automatically jump to ending the franchise with part six with Freddy's Dead. Sorry, my back's itching. But um, just because this film didn't do that well. Well, it did okay, but compared to the colossal amount of money that part four made, it was a, you know, a bomb. Um... But it actually was a hit. It's just compared to the money that Part 4 made, it was a bomb. But, yeah, I can see why it didn't do that well in theaters. But it's kind of stupid just to jump to killing off the franchise with Part 6 with Freddy's Dead. Just because how this film did. Because it's not that we're tired of Freddy at this point. It was just because this film is not that good. <laughs> it's a passable film. It's not a great film. It never will be a great film. It's only a passable film and... I only recommend seeing it if you've seen the first four and are a fan. So I'll see you guys again with Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. And I have my final say on this film, it's a low two-star film at the possible four. And I'll see you guys again with the supposed Final Nightmare.